Hi, and welcome back to Survey of Engineering. In this video, we will briefly review the engineering disciplines that we'll be co we will be covering during this survey course. We will talk about different educational pathways to engineering careers, or how do I get there from here. We will then explore some of the different jobs engineers may hold within those disciplines. Finally, we will see some figures for income engineers earn within various disciplines and talk about the demand for engineers in the future. Here are your portfolio questions for this video. What are the different disciplines of engineering? For this question, list the disciplines that we will cover within this course, but also any others you see mentioned in this video or in previous videos you have watched, or other disciplines you may already know about. What are the different jobs an engineer might do within those disciplines? Include with this list notes that will help you remember characteristics of these types of jobs. Pause the video here if necessary so you can write these questions in your notebook, leaving space in your notebook so that you can take notes during the video and next class in order to answer the questions. The engineering disciplines we will cover in this class are bioengineering, chemical engineering, civil and environmental engineering, computer science, electrical and computer engineering, mechanical engineering, and material science and engineering. But there are many other disciplines and sub-disciplines. Just try a Google search or engineer on engineering disciplines and see how many you can find. So where do engineers work? In addition to the different disciplines or fields of engineering, there are different types of jobs within those fields that an engineer might do. The research engineer is closest to the scientist. These engineers are interested in the application of new knowledge. They typically design and implement experiments, and they often work at a university, a government laboratory, or an industrial research center. A development en engineer uses knowledge obtained from research that has been performed by others and applies it to develop a specific product or application. He or she takes what is done in a research lab and works to bring it to full-scale production. This type of engineer spends time evaluating a new technology in pilot plants, which are small versions of what a final production plant might be, or as prototypes, which are initial versions of a product. A test engineer designs the tests that a product or process will undergo before it is sold or while it is in production. These tests ensure the safety, quality, integrity of the products, basically making sure that a product will work as intended without risks to safety. The test engineer must therefore design tests that simulate the conditions a product will experience throughout its lifespan. For example, a test engineer might design a test to simulate the number of openings and closings a cabinet door would experience during its lifetime to make sure that the hinges will hold up under regular use. The test engineer is also involved in developing methods for how to use the instruments and sensors to collect data from tests at, uh, during regular plant operation. The design engineer is involved with providing detailed specs for a product or component of a process. These specs include exact size measurements, dimensions, and performance criteria such as flow rates, energy required or supplied, forces created or withstood, etc. He or she uses computer design tools and software to make sure components of a product or process fit within a system. This includes making sure pieces fit, pieces of a product fit together or that a piece of manufacturing equipment fits within the manufacturing process line. Adjustments are then made to the design based on the results obtained from testing. A manufacturing engineer develops the processes to make the products we use. He or she figures out how to take raw materials and turn them into a finished product. An important part of this job is ensuring that pro the product is of required quality, meaning that the resulting product fits within the required performance tolerances. 
For example, a manufacturing engineer might make sure that a medicine produced by a pharmaceutical company always has the required dose of drug in each pill. They also work to reduce the cost of operation of the equipment during production. Well, other areas that an engineer might work in are technical support, providing technical help to users of a product, sales, often products, for example, manufacturing equipment, this would include things like pumps and instruments to collect data, etc., are purchased by engineers who need to know information about the product that is of a very technical nature. Another engineer is likely the best type of person to provide the needed information. Consulting. Engineer consultants provide technical expertise in a specific area to clients. Management. Engineers may move into management of teams of engineers. Engineers go into other professions like law, education, medicine, or business. Here's a chart showing the average starting salaries in 2013 for students graduating with a bachelor's degree in various en different engineering majors. Engineers have some of the highest starting salaries of college graduates. As a comparison, the average starting salary across all bachelor's, degree was, bachelor's degrees was $45,000. The median annual income for workers ages 25 to 34 who only graduated from high school and did not obtain a bachelor's degree is about $30,000. Average starting salaries for graduates with a degree in engineering technology are about $62,000. Starting salaries for other engineering disciplines go up from there, topping out with petroleum engineering at about $93,000. As you can see, engineering jobs pay very well. This data came from the National Association of Colleges and Employers and the National Centers for Educational Statistics. In addition to better salaries, unemployment is also lower for engineers. Unemployment for engineers in 2012 averaged at about 2% for engineers, which is about half the unemployment rate for all bachelor's degree holders. Also, demand for engineers in the job market is expected to increase at a about average rate uh, to above average rate for most engineering disciplines. Of course, unemployment's rate vary by, by profession and by year. Here's a chart showing unemployment rates for various engineering disciplines for 2011 and 2012. Nearly all are consistently below the national average of unemployment rate of 7.8%, which you can see with the orange line on the graph. Some disciplines, such as biomedical engineers, nuclear engineers, and petroleum engineers, have some of the lowest unemployment rates across all types of jobs. So in summary, we have reviewed the different engineering disciplines we will be covering in this course. We talked about the various different educational pathways to engineering careers from associate's degrees to bachelor's degrees and further advanced degrees, but that, the most, that most engineering re careers require at least a bachelor's degree. We also described the different types of jobs an engineer might do within the engineering disciplines. We showed that some income for those in engineering jobs is very good and unemployment is very low compared to other jobs and that demand for engineers in the future is generally high. Information in this video came from US News and World Report, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the National Association of Colleges and Employers, and the National Center for Education Statistics. If you haven't already done so, go back and answer the portfolio questions based on the information presented in this video. Be prepared to discuss your answers in class and which types of engineering jobs are interesting to you. So think about that ahead of time. See you in class.